tonight in a theme that rhymes. God, work with my mind. Get me prepared for what you have for me. There are many of you, you don't have things tonight that you should have. Therefore, we should already be possessing certain things tonight, but you don't have it. You don't have it. And the reason you don't have it is your mind. Notice that. Get out of your country, verse 1, from your family. Leave your father's house. Go to a land that I'm going to show you, Abram. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And you're going to be a blessing. Abram, I will bless people who bless you. Oh, y'all too quiet, I tell you. Abram, I will bless people who bless you. Abram, I'm going to so be with you that I will curse him who curses you. Woo! See, that's the reason you have to be careful not to mess with God's people. Can I break that down? We have to be careful how we treat each other. Because if I'm Abraham's seed through faith, then the same way he got those who messed with Abraham, he'll get those who mess with me. Yeah. Yo. That's good stuff there. I, he'll get them. And see, when you know the Bible to be true, and when you know you are truly the seed of Abraham, you shouldn't have no problem telling people, you better watch how you treat me. You can tell folk, you better keep your mouth off of me. Oh, who you supposed to be? It ain't who I am. As much as it is the one whom I serve. How many know that's right? Some of us know it's right because in time past, we done put our mouth on God's people and paid a price. Right? This is how he's letting Abram, this is how I'm going to be with you. Which means God had to be watching out for him. Because how many know there are times that folks will curse you? This ain't even my message. There are times folks will curse you, but they won't do it to your face. But God said, I'm going to get those who do it to your face. And I'm going to get those who do it behind your back. Because there are times we don't know who talking about us when we're not around. And see, some of y'all act like you've been talking about folks. Because you're not getting happy on this part at all. But you better repent quickly. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. There's certain folk when folk go to talk about them, you gotta say, hey, see you bye. The latter clause of verse three. This is what I'm concerned about. And in you, all the families, all the families. All the families. All the families. So you got these folk always trying to separate who God's blessing is on. Well, God blesses his own this group of people. God blessing his own this group of people. But see, he told Abram, through you, I'm going to bless all the families of the earth. Through you, Abram, every race is going to get the opportunity to be blessed by me. Notice in verse 1. That it was the Lord speaking. Or talking with Abram. It was the Lord. The Bible says in verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram. So the Lord is having. A conversation with Abram. Now, we know the word Lord is the Hebrew word Yehovah. 
Jehovah. Of course, we know when Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, came, died upon the cross, we know Jesus to be Lord. We know this. Jesus is Lord. Here in the Hebrew, the word that is being used again is the word Jehovah. Jehovah represents the most high God. Jehovah represents the only true God. And we need to know that as God's people, that there is only one true God. For worship a lot of gods, lowercase g, but the God whom we serve, he is the true God. Come on, y'all. He is the true and living God. He is the most high. We like to say it like this. He is Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings. He is Alpha and Omega. He is beginning and he is the end. Come on. That's the one to whom I serve. He is the one to whom I have pledged my allegiance or my loyalty to. And when I did so, like many of you, I got it right. I got it right by making my allegiance to the true and the living God. I got it right. Pastor, why you say you got it right? Because there are so many who got it wrong. Whoa, yes, they did. But when it comes to Jehovah, secondly, I want us to receive that he is three things that I often mention to us that we never need to lose sight of. Number one, he is omniscient. When it comes to Jehovah, he is omniscient. Omniscient means that he knows everything. He knows everything or he knows all. All. Number two, when it comes to him, we have to see him as omnipotent. Omnipotent meaning that he has all power and all authority. Brother Q and the praise team was singing about it earlier that he is able. What makes our God able? Because he has all power and he has all authority authority so if God tells you that he's going to do a thing and you know him to be Jehovah listen you don't wait until that thing manifests before you praise him you praise him in advance because you count it so and done because of his power you count it so and done because nobody can stop him from doing what it is that he has purpose to do and some of you ought to give him a praise right now because what he told you years ago, when I look at many of you right now, he brought that thing to pass. When he promised a lot of y'all that he would work out certain things, even at the time when you couldn't understand, but how are you going to do it, Lord? He reminded you that I have all power and all authority. And when you recognize the Lord as having all power and all authority, you have no problem trusting him. Listen to me, saying with everything that concerns you. If you know him to have all power, all authority, you have no problem trusting him with all things that concern your family. That concerns your marriage. That concerns your finances. That which concerns your health. That which is concerning your children, your job, your career. Come on. And we can go on and on. Why? Because he possesses all power and all authority. And no one can dethrone him. Is that right? No one can dethrone him. Finally... When it comes to the word Jehovah, it means the existing one. The existing one. Now, some will break it down as being the self-existing one. And you say, well, Pastor, what makes God great about existing? Well, you have to understand that we also exist, but we need God's help to exist. 
we can't exist without his help. And so when you talk about the Lord, Jehovah, he doesn't need our help to exist. He exists on his own. He is sovereign all by himself. And so we never want to get this thing out of order. God does not need me the way that I need him. Come on, somebody. You better recognize that. When folk get to acting like God needs them, like he can't be God without you, like his church can't do what it needs to do without you, you done bump your head as we used to say in the old days. Something is wrong with you. I recognize that I need God. I need him to exist literally, but I also need him to exist as a productive man. I need him. He is my source. Do you need him like that? Do you realize how much you need him? Do you realize there are things you could not do without him? 